Hi hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking all about the different properties of trapezoids. So a trapezoid is a type of quadrilateral, which means that it inherits the properties of a general quadrilateral. That means it has four sides and the sum of the interior angles is 360 degrees. So in this lesson we're going to talk about regular trapezoids as well as isosceles trapezoids. All right, first, regular trapezoids. They have at least one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Depending what state you live in and what curriculum your state follows, your curriculum might not include this at least part, um, but here in New York, which is where I teach, we follow that definition. So at least one pair of opposite sides are parallel. The same side interior angles are supplementary. Let's talk about what that means. So when we learned about parallel lines, cut by a transversal, so there's parallel lines, here's the transversal. These two angles that I'm marking off are called same side interior angles. They are on the same side of the transversal and they're in the interior or in between the two parallel lines. So those are supplementary here. Our last fact is that the median is the average of the bases. The median is also sometimes called the mid-segment of the trapezoid. So I'll draw here what that looks like. The median basically connects the midpoints of both sides of the legs of the trapezoid, and that's the average of the bases. So for example, let's say that uh, the top base was, uh, we'll say six, and let's say the bottom base was 10. The average of those two numbers is eight, and that would be the length of the median. Now, if we're talking about isosceles trapezoid, since it is a type of trapezoid, it inherits all of those properties we just talked about for general trapezoids. But in addition, the diagonals are congruent to one another. One pair of opposite sides, called the legs, are congruent. You can see those marked off with the tick marks in the picture. And the base angles are congruent. That goes for both sets of base angles. So these two on the bottom would be congruent, and these two at the top would be congruent as well. So these sides are called the legs, and the two sides that are parallel are called the bases. All right, let's look at some sample problems that involve trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids. Number one, solve for x and y. This looks to be just a regular trapezoid here. I have nothing indicating it's isosceles. And we're looking for angles. So we know that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So I'm gonna use my calculator here x and 42 have to add up to 180, so I'm going to subtract 42 from 180, and I can see that x is 138 degrees. I'm going to do a similar method to get y. I'm going to subtract the 104 from 180. I could also add up all of the angles in the shape and make sure that they add up to 360. So x is 138, y is 76. Number two, given isosceles trapezoid ABCD, if AC is 16, what is the length of BD? Well, AC in this picture you could see is one of the diagonals. And in a in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent. So AC and BD are going to be congruent to one another. So therefore, BD is 16. And I don't really have any work to, to do to show that. Okay, number three. Find the length of the median of the trapezoid. Okay, so let's recall our rule that the median is the average of the bases. To find the average of two things, we add them up and we divide by two. So I'm going to add up 18 and 30, divide by two. That would give me 48 over two or 24. Another way that you could think about this is when you've learned about mean, median, and mode, median is the number in the middle. If you think about 18 and you think about 30, what number is located in the middle of them? And that would give you 24. All right, number four, find the measure of all the missing angles in the isosceles trapezoid shown below. Well, we know in an isosceles trapezoid that the base angles are congruent. So this is going to give me 73 down here. The two top base angles are also congruent. We just have to figure out what they are. So remember our same side interior angles that we talked about before. So here's an example of that. Those add up to 180. So I'm going to subtract 73 from 180. This becomes 107 and same over here. All right, number five. In an isosceles trapezoid ABCD, AC is 5X minus 2. BD is 3X plus 6. And we're going to solve for X. 
All right, well, we talked before in an isosceles trapezoid, the diagonals are congruent to one another. So I'm going to set these equal to solve. I'm going to start by moving the 3x over to the left-hand side. I'm going to move the 2 over. I'm not going to show every step here, but I'm adding 2 to both sides, and I'm going to divide both sides by 2, and I get that x is equal to 4. Okay, number six, find the measure of all angles shown in the isosceles trapezoid below. Well, the two angles that are marked in the picture are, again, same side interior angles, so I know they have to add up to 180. I also know that these are going to be congruent, that I have the x and the x minus 50 on the right side as well. All right, so x plus x minus 50 has to add up to 180. That's what it means to be supplementary. Let's combine like terms. I'm going to add the 50 to the other side, trying to isolate our variable here, and I get that x is 115. That gives me the measure of the two top base angles. To get the bottom two, plug 115 in, and I'm going to get 65 for each of those. You could always check your work by making sure that all four angles in the trapezoid add up to 360. All right, our last problem is a little different. So this is something called a coordinate proof. It says quadrilateral ABCD has vertices and it gives us four points. And we have to prove this is a trapezoid. Notice the question does not say, is it a trapezoid? It's not a question. Um, I shouldn't even call it a question. It's just saying prove it's a trapezoid. So we have to basically verify that this is a trapezoid. So to do that, we're gonna start by plotting the shape. And when we plot, we're going to put the letters next to each point. So negative 4, 2, I'm going to put A next to it. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to plot each of the four points. And then I'm going to use nice straight lines to connect those. So what I was saying before is that this problem does not have a question mark at the end. This should look like a trapezoid when you are done graphing it. I always recommend graphing it because I think it can help you see what our answer should look like in the end. Okay, so this looks like a trapezoid to me and it appears to me that BC and AD are parallel. Okay, we're going to just verify that. We can't just say that they look parallel. We have to actually do some sort of mathematical calculation in order to back that up. So I'm going to do the slope formula for both of those sides. If you remember the initial definition of a trapezoid, it's a quadrilateral where at least one pair of opposite sides are parallel. So we have to show these sides are parallel in order for this to be a trapezoid. I'm gonna do uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find my slope. You could also do rise over run on your graph, that would be fine. All right, so change in y over change in x. I get negative 6 over 3 or negative 2 as the slope of BC. I would recommend reducing your slopes. I'll show you why in a second. And then I'm going to find the slope of AD. This is why I would reduce my slope because negative 6 over 3 and negative 8 over 4 are not the same exact numbers. Of course, they're equivalent, um, but I'm just going to reduce it to negative 2. That way we can see that they are the same. So I know that this is a trapezoid because these opposite sides are parallel. And I know they're parallel because their slopes are equal to each other. We have to write that all in a sentence um, at the end. So I'm going to kind of like restate the question a bit. I'm going to say quadrilateral ABCD. Zoom in here is a trapezoid. Because one pair of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, you could also say because at least one pair of opposite sides are parallel, both fit. And let's explain how we know they're parallel. I'm going to say since their slopes are equal. So our coordinate proof consists of our graph using whatever formulas we need um, to kind of verify the shape's characteristics and then writing this conclusion at the end. 
right, hopefully this video helped you understand about the properties of trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids. The next video in this playlist will be all about the properties of parallelograms.